Reseller Clickbait Podcast, episode 92. Top of the Good morning Patrick. to you, fellas. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. <laughs> Pat. Where, where, where's the, where's the green, guys? Uh, Today is. So I would tell you it's in envy. I would tell you it's in my wallet, but I think it's in Donna's purse. That's where the green is. When, when is St. Patrick's Day? Is it today? It is. It's it is today. today, or well, actually, it was yesterday. This comes out on Monday, so yesterday was. So we're recording Sunday. on St. Patty's Day. We are, and okay. you know the wearing of the green. I've got the green on here, and I have, uh, I have more questions. <laughs> wait, let's let's find out what we got going on here, though, because we got That's another bunch down too. at the bottom. Now, okay, Corey, I'm I'm a bit disappointed. And our guest, Steve, by the way, Steve, happy heart treasures. You're, you're a bit disappointed in your guests. We haven't even started. Well, I was I was led Welcome. to believe I was led to believe by Corey that yeah. we were getting a, a real life leprechaun to be uh, on the show. It was it was St. Patrick's Day, and he's like, Oh, I'm lining up to get maybe I just assumed you would have Corey, been a leprechaun. Or I haven't known Corey yeah. for that long, but Corey's fine kind of full of crap sometimes, so I think that would be the <laughs> yes, case. <he> is. <laughs> and also, if Corey was going to pick a leprechaun, it would have been someone much shorter than Steve. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, would, I would not make a good leprechaun. <laughs> so, yeah, uh again, we got Steve Happy Heart Treasures as always, Corey from Grams and Pops. Wait, see? I oh, did no, it again. Nice. Corey from Grams and Pops <laughs> Vintage. I'm Ken SSK Promo, Mr. Bill. And a whole string of other stuff. The DOG suffering from delusions of grandeur. But um, Steve, welcome, welcome, my friend. Thank you. We Thank got you. Uh, now. This is the first time that I met you here, just like a few moments ago yeah. when you yeah. came on. But Corey, Corey has met you at the Plains to Profit meetup. Yes. Yep. Yes. And uh, and so you have kind of a interesting business model or the way that you go about sourcing and the way that you go about um getting rid of inventory and we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that but first i'm gonna i'm gonna make you big on the screen and give you a, a chance here to kind of introduce yourself to folks that might not be familiar with you or your channel and uh right. then we'll kind of get into that so take it away all right uh my name is steve i'm happy heart treasures i'm half of happy heart treasures i'm the brawn half my wife donna is the brains half and we've had a channel for youtube for almost three years now. Uh, it was just a fun channel. We started just to, uh, for, so our moms, when we went full time and quit our jobs, our moms were worried about us. And so we made the channel so they could watch and see what we're doing. And it's, uh, it's been a slow growth, but over the beginning of this year, we really have gotten more traction and it's, uh, we put out more videos now, but we are full time resellers in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we do a model of a lot of different things about basically about anything we can figure out to do. We try. So, and we can get into all that, but it's myself and my wife, and she's the boss. Yeah, I'm I'm bored with that already. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I have uh, recently. Corey had had found your channel, and you kind of do a a similar sort of a format that uh, Corey and Teresa do over in Grams of Pops, your husband and wife team that kind of are on this reselling journey. I like that that you said you did it so that your 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 moms were worried about you and that they could keep up. <laughs> With uh, what was going on, that's an interesting take on why one would would start a a YouTube channel. Anyway, we were watching YouTube channels, and, and one of our moms was like, "Okay, cool, go for it." The other one was very, "No, you can't quit your job." And and I personally, I was the one that Donna quit first, and I was like, "No, I can't quit my job." And I quit my job, and three years later, somehow we still are living in the same house. We haven't been kicked out, so we're doing all right. Perfect. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just not get kicked out. Just yeah. that's a, yeah. I get I get kicked out of a sale over the weekend. Or what, really? No, just this week. Yeah, I got kicked out. Well, it wasn't um by like the owners or whatever. It was a big big like uh uh rummage sale or or like a big garage sale or whatever. It was in a greenhouse. I do this story real quick. It was um <sighs> da, 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 da. big storms came through all of a sudden we were in there it was a special like sneak preview night for this big large sale um shout out to my friend where do i got it shout out i'm gonna throw up a picture here shout out to my friend aaron rebel junk i don't know if you're familiar with aaron rebel junk she's in the middle and then of course jill is there with me on the end um aaron helps out volunteers for this big sale every year and they have like a, a early bird night 
where it's a ticketed event. You can buy a ticket, go and see it. But what we were in, it's in a big greenhouse, huge, massive sale, just really well organized. And uh, but storms blew up and all of a sudden the tornado sirens were going off. The uh, everybody's phone in the whole place just like went off all at one time. And uh, they came over the speakers and said, uh, everybody, we are evacuating the building. Everybody just drop all your bags because everybody, you know, they were all pretty much resellers. Everybody had their big blue right. Ikea bags and it's just drop those bags. Let's we're we're leaving. We're going to like the building next door, you know, more of a solid structure for everybody. So uh, pretty, pretty kooky uh event and then you know they kind of waited we were over there probably 20 25 minutes or so and then they they let us all come back because the storm there was actually a tornado that had touched down right in that county and it was kind of heading that direction and a, a big you know plastic greenhouse is not going to be uh much protection no, well not that, that other building <laughs> yeah exactly oh when that and it started to hail during the thing and man that was like it was intense it was an intense uh event but picked up a lot of really cool stuff but where are you uh, located i'm not familiar with where you're at i am in ohio uh north okay. north central ohio area and uh so really great sourcing around here in, in our area and stuff but well, that was if you uh, gotta go you might as well go doing something you love so going out at a garage <laughs> sale probably worse yeah. ways to go <laughs> it's just like everybody's hanging out everybody's kind of mad because they can't get you know back in there and get those get the sale get the deals and uh but they released us and you know the rest of the evening was not not too bad and just picked up a ton of great stuff at really great prices so again uh shout out to aaron for rebel junk for letting us know and i got to meet some other other resellers some people that i know um got to hand out some stickers and stuff like that to to folks you know i remember time. you telling me about that sale last year it sounds like a like a nice sale it'd be a cool one to go visit during that sale yeah it is uh it just and it, it's huge. The greenhouse is huge, and the, and it's so well organized. I mean, they got electronics section and toys and holiday and glassware and dishes and crafting and sports and and it's all organized. Everything is priced, and they have volunteers all over the place. If you're carrying around a load of stuff, they'll take it up front for you and you know put your name on it, put it behind the the table so you don't have to keep carrying stuff around. As uh, and they try to make it as convenient for you to buy as much stuff as you can. And uh, cool. so, so very cool. Right. I can't do it anymore. With with Steve in red and you in green, people are going to think this is a Christmas episode. And, <laughs> and I did have a follow up question from the beginning. Yes. What is St. Patrick's Day celebrating? St. Saint, Saint Patrick. <laughs> you're you're, you're the one for it, so you got to have the answer. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm uh, German. He's, he's, I don't, I don't think I can. Well, at Heritage, I'm German. I'm American, but I'm not sure what St. Patrick's Day is for other than. To get drunk on green beer. And... I'm not Irish, so I couldn't tell you. That's funny. Ah, uh, I figured uh, you knew. You, you came, stumped him. <laughs> you came ready for. It. When it comes to holidays, like Ken knows. It's usually the, okay. So I I googled this. The day commemorates Saint Patrick and the arrival of Christianity in Ireland, and by okay. extension celebrates the heritage and culture of the Irish in general. So uh, why is that celebrated in the U.S.? Well, because we have a lot of Irish, uh, Irish folks. A lot of the Irish came over and immigrated way back in the day. I don't really know. We Actually, start it's just, over if you want. It's a not. It's an. <laughs> it's another. Just an opportunity, you know, to wear a to wear a fun hat and you know, look look at, look at this shiny bow tie that I have. What you know? Why not? Oh, and here's my shirt that says I'm magically delicious All right. right there. So I so, made that shirt myself because it was appropriate. I'll make it a note that next year we don't celebrate St. Patty's. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what, hey, just because you didn't wear green, you look like you, you're you green. That's it's kind of a green, green shirt. You look yeah, like you're ready to like hide out green. in a jungle, though, Carrie. It's go. kind of, or uh, Corey. Carrie. 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 See, I don't know. I messed up earlier. <laughs> I messed up earlier because I was making a banner. Uh, here, I'll throw this up right now. You know, please, way down so there, Donna, please check out Steve and Donna. And I was like, oh, I, I want to make sure. How do you how do you spell your wife's name? Is Bonnie, B-O-N-N-I-E? Is that how you spell it? <laughs> yeah. like, well, I, I, so. Not Bonnie, Donna. Some, yeah, yeah. If I would have put uh, 
Check out Steve and Bonnie at Happy Heart. I might have started a little, you know. You would have caught me off guard, that's for sure. Little marital <laughs> discord there uh, within the family. And she like, Donna would be like, uh, who is this Bonnie that we're, we're speaking yeah, of? That's a great but, question. Uh, well, if, so, if, if Donna's anything like Teresa, she's not going to watch this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donna will watch this. Donna loves watching all the things. Teresa, Teresa does a watch. She just asked me how it went. And, I, and today I get to tell her we celebrated a holiday that I don't know what it is. Yeah, there That's, you go. But yeah, I do I now, just, so I guess I can't say that. Now I know. One I, of the I'm things still really about confused doing about the why reseller we rally, here. doing the reseller rally, and then coming home after meeting everybody, it's made it very different. Like our routine, there was just a few resellers oh, that yeah. we watch on YouTube, and now we try to watch all the people from the reseller rally that we actually met. Yeah. And so we uh, we don't really watch the big ones much anymore because we're trying to keep up with the people that yeah. we actually met, which is a lot more fun, you know. Well, well, I found see, like three wait a minute. more you the were, other day. You were in the, Cincinnati? No, 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 no. Right here. We're over here. The Plains, Plains to Profit. Profit. Yeah. Oh, the Plains to Profit. Okay. When yeah, you had said reseller right rally, that's what I thought you were talking about was the reseller rally in Cincinnati. I was like, how did I not meet no, no. meet you in Cincinnati? <laughs> Uh, no, so, we, yeah, found, you, we keep finding more small channels. We found three more yesterday while I was at, at work at the escape room place that I'd never heard of before. And and you you rarely see them come across your feed. So I was surprised to find a couple more channels of, of couples that have small, like just over a thousand sub channels. So yeah. Those are usually the ones we watch. We don't watch a lot of the bigger channels anymore. It's mostly yeah. small channels like that. But yeah, there's a lot to watch. There is there is a lot to watch, yeah. Yeah, there well, that's is, why that's... we're we're thankful that anybody watches our channel. It's it's pretty amazing <laughs> that somebody would sit down and intentionally watch us, but that's well, you're cool. on our watch list. Well, that's we for appreciate sure. it. You guys yeah, are easy to watch. I have been uh, like say I caught up. I was watching uh, when Corey because Corey's been talking about you guys for a while, and uh, he had you know first found your channel, started watching, and uh, said you need to go check these guys out. And uh, this was back, and I so it's like, oh, and I subscribed to your channel. The first first video that that I turned on, you were um, you were out snow blowing the <laughs> the driveway that day. It had snowed a whole My bunch. My little snow blower, like, yeah. And that's pretty much was the whole like the whole video. It was like you. Snow, I was like, what's this? You know, for reselling content. And then I think the next video after that was something kind of out of your normal uh, realm of what you do. We and, don't have a normal. Um, we we do not have a normal. I can tell you that much. That is the so normal. I, no normal. <laughs> and there is, you know, so much content out there. And oh, my, oh. my, my stuff's falling over back here. That's that's the ghost of St. Patrick. Heard Corey talking crap about St. Patrick's yeah. Day. So now he's messing <laughs> with your, you your clover. <laughs> Bad news, though. He came after the leprechaun, not Corey. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> So uh, then Corey, then Corey was, I know he was e excited to get to meet you in person. You guys had, yeah. you know, had interaction and had talked to stuff before the Planes to Profit meet up. And then, you know, he's like, oh, Steve and Donna are going to be there. And uh, so you guys got to meet up and uh, he's just, you know, he tells me all the time, you know, check out these videos. You should see what they're doing. And that, well, that was one of the cool things about the Planes to Profit uh, event was being able to meet up with other people that do things differently, that it's yeah. not the same. You know, we talked about not watching a lot of the the bigger channels that are out there because, number one, we've seen what they do. And, and, and as far as reselling, you're not gaining a lot of new information, right, I guess. Right. It's mostly for the entertainment and, and liking the personalities of folks. And uh, But if you want to learn something new, you got to branch out and find somebody new. And so I caught it's up on a bunch of yours. It's hard to find somebody new. And that's, I, we were on for two and a half years. And December 31st, we had 650 subscribers. That was after two and a half years. And then yeah. I put out a video. I was frustrated because we, Donna decided that, you know, she said, we need to try to do a video a day. It was something that Bearded Thrift Machine said to gain some traction. Yeah. And so one of the first videos I put out, I named it a big problem for small YouTubers because I like searched for small, trying to find small YouTubers and I couldn't hard find, to find them. They're hard to yeah. find. And so that one got traction and we went from 650 subscribers. And then on the 14th of January, we hit a thousand subscribers. So in two weeks, nice. we gained 350 subscribers after two and a half years. Um, so it, it kind of went, and that's when Corey happened to find us and Alicia inked picker. She, she yes. actually lives in our neighborhood. We've been doing this for, 
full time for three years. I mean, we've been doing it for a lot longer and we didn't know any of these people existed. We almost missed this planes to profit because we just didn't know. We didn't know there was a reseller in our neighborhood. And so it's been really fun to find other people in the Midwest and, you know, smaller channels doing stuff like we do that we can talk to because here in Lincoln, we don't know anybody that does anything like what we do. So we found a lot of fun. We found your channel completely by accident and literally like within a week, Alicia Inked Picker had actually bought something from your dollar auction, yeah. picked something up from your house and found out you guys were YouTubers. So me and Alicia found your channel at about the same time, which is crazy because she it's had just moved there. And the fact yeah. that you two were, you know, helping put on planes as a profit and then, you know, we we didn't miss it. It would you told us about it, it was like a month and a half away. Like yeah, we could have, have a lot of time. completely missed it. So that was awesome. No, it worked out good. And and that's that's kind of how we found most of the smaller YouTubers is just completely by accident because there's yeah YouTube isn't pushing them out there like those right. small channels and stuff which we would which are the ones we really enjoy watching right partially because yeah, they're a lot to. less tight lipped than a lot of the bigger channels are it seems like the bigger channels whatever whatever caught their niche that blew their channel up they kind of stay in that lane right right and yeah. then the smaller channels are more open and they're just the topics are much wider variety and it seems like they're much more willing to share. Yeah. So it's, yeah. those are the ones we really enjoy watching because, because we do learn stuff. Right. Yeah, definitely. And there are a lot of, a lot of channels on out there. It's sometimes it's hard, you know, you go watch a channel and to like learn, I gravitate back to a lot of those same channels because it's hard to learn somebody's personality, what they're doing the first, the first few times, you know, that you, you know, like, you know, like I had to suffer through all of your videos here, Steve, just to, um, you know, put them on I two times it. speed and hope that they were over. No, uh, very, very good content. I'm, I'm just busting your, well, busting your you bag what, there on that. I go back I've, every now and then. I'm sure you've done it. You go back and watch something from a couple of years ago. And I'm just glad we had 650 subscribers because before I learned how to like you're good at filling the dead space before I learned how to try to fill dead space and to edit and cut out those slow parts. Yeah. Like it's hard to watch because you, you, there's a lot of dead space and a lot of I'm um, trying to figure out what to say. But yeah, you know, obviously Ours we've are still a lot hard to watch. I, yeah. I think your own videos. <laughs> I think your own videos are always the hardest to watch, or at least that's what I tell myself. Because when we it, watch it our is. videos, because you're you're so focused on yeah. what you're seeing wrong, you know, instead of just yeah enjoying it and, and just paying attention and just taking it for what it is, you're watching to see what what you might have slipped up on or what you could do different. The the worst thing we hate about our own videos is we think we talk too slow. Like I usually take time to think about what I'm saying as I'm saying it. And I I can confirm that. I I can confirm that. That's why it's on two times. That's that's why they have a speed selector. Get you up to normal speed, Corey. (laughs) (laughs) I function a little bit behind. A regular, you know, human cadence, you know, in your, in your voice. But, you know, nobody enjoys watching me more than me so i always enjoy seeing all of my stuff but i I know like when you said you know as far as the editing and stuff and you watch those and it's like oh man i wish i would have said that i wish Mm -hmm. it's almost every time you you film some sort of a video you you think oh we i should i should just start over i should do that again because now i know what i want to say Right, right and you know this would have been funny or this would have been more interesting something that you could have said about an item and uh so I, my, my going back is always, I'm pretty quick witted. I'm, I'm a, you know, when I first met my wife, I give her a lot of crap and I still do. And some people are like, man, you give her a lot of crap. Well, that's how she knows that I still like her. Right. Well, so my <laughs> watching videos back, I'll be like, I'll think of something. I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have said that joke there. Like, cause I have my kids, you know, yeah. I think I entertain them, but they roll their eyes a lot at me with all my, you know, just little <laughs> chat, dad jokes and crap. Yep. So that's usually what I'm watching back. I'm like, Oh, I should have said this there. That would have been funny. But just yes. to catch Don off guard. I'd, I'd love to go back on half my videos. If I could spend a month making each video instead of like two days, there's a, <laughs> a lot month? that we would go back and reshoot and re-edit. Right, right. But yeah. I don't think but, YouTube uh, would like us any better if we did that. But then again, people try to, you can tell channels that try too hard and try yeah. to get it, make everything perfect. And that's hard to watch too, because oftentimes you, you got to be spontaneous and just be yourself. I, that's the yes. one thing Don and I, since we started this, we're just going to be ourselves, And if somebody don't want to watch us, we don't care. Like as long as our moms still watch us, if they stop watching us, then we got issues. But <laughs> yeah. otherwise, I ain't going to worry about it. We're not everybody's <laughs> cup of tea and we're okay with that. Yeah, exactly. So do you guys, do you have a regular uh, video schedule? Like do you no. put videos out on certain days or just whenever 
something no, interesting is happening in your it, in it your was reselling whenever life? Something's interesting. We got in a thing where um, I, Donna wanted to put out more videos, and I because uh -huh. this is what we do every day. It's it wasn't it was at a point where it wasn't like new and fresh to me. So I thought nobody's interested in this because this is just our daily life. Well, then yeah. after it clicked when we started making more videos at the beginning of the year, that's when it clicked in my head that this is routine for me, but nobody else is doing this. This is not routine for a lot of people. So then it was easier yeah. to our normal day of listing and things that sold. And, you know, if we get a phone call and we go check something out. That's when it's like, oh, okay, this people aren't doing this. So it's more, it, it went click yeah. for me Then it's easier to make content. And now we tried to do every day in January and, and you can't, we can't do every day, but we probably did 15 out of 21 days to start the month. And now it's, we try to do every other day. I'm actually to a point where I'm filming a video one day, the next day I'll edit the video. Cause I was filming and editing the same day and it takes so much time. So now yeah. we're, we're about every other day, you know, and, and if we miss a day or two, it, whatever it is, what it is. So, yeah. And that's what's well, working. Yeah, uh, we, it's working. I appreciate it. That's, and that's when you see somebody out there a lot, you learn their, their personalities, you know, that's, yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy more, um, see, you know, learning about people and what they're doing and that kind of the stuff that's outside of their reselling business. Uh, because, you know, a lot of us do the, the same sort of thing. We're sourcing. If you're an everything seller, if you're not, you know, way niche down, right. you're, uh, you're, you want uh, we're all looking for the same thing. We all go to the yard sales. We all go to the thrift stores and you're, you're, you're finding the same things. Now you might see something that's, you know, really interesting or, Oh, I hadn't thought about looking for those sorts of items. And you gain a little bit of information there, but I think it's that more for me, it's that personal interaction to, to learn a person and get, get to right. know them, even if you've never met them or don't have any interaction other than a comment or you know, in, on their video or something like that. So, right. yeah, the, the more content that, uh, that you can put out and, you know, I know YouTube likes things to be consistent, but as long as you're, you know, not on a regimented schedule and you're putting out regular videos, that seems to, to work for you. Of course, your channel yeah. is, is really growing. So you would talk just in the first of the year or the end of the year, you were just in the 600 after the first year, you went to a thousand. Where are you at right now with uh, your channel? 1321 this morning is where we're at. So, so we've so doubled another... in, since January 1st, we've doubled our channel size, went from 650 to 1321 this morning is what we lost four subscribers two days ago. I don't know what happened. There was a big, big riding in the streets and they all left. So that was, and I mean, we don't pay that much attention. We, <laughs> you lose a subscriber. And I think it's, we made some shorts for a while and then we get a bunch, you get a bunch of subscribers off shorts. And then we quit yeah. doing those because they mess up the graphs and everything. And I think that's probably people that saw the short and then they're like, well, all they're doing is these long videos. So, but I don't know. We don't pay that much attention. But four in one day was like, wow, this is kind of weird. But yeah. But it's all, it's all so good. are you trying to uh, use YouTube as a, now that you are hit that thousand and, and I assume that you had your watch hours and you are monetized. Yes. Yep. Yep. Is that one of your goals to use YouTube as a source of income, as one of your supplements, or are you doing it just kind of for the enjoyment and get we, stuff out there? When we talked about it, when it started growing after that first, we said, we're afraid, I'm afraid, and she's, afraid, I don't know if she is, but I'm afraid of, I don't want to change to chase the dollar. I don't want to try to change what we do and who we are trying to get more subscribers because I think it would actually hurt us. We, what you see on our videos is exactly who we are in real life and our day-to-day -day yeah. life. It's just we turn a camera on. And so would it be great if it was a source of income that would actually change how we do things? Yes. Do I plan? I never planned on getting monetized. I always made the joke, but I was serious too, that we're never yeah. going to get monetized. And so if it grows to where, you know, it's not, we're getting our first check or whatever in the next week or two. And that's exciting for us, but at yes. the same time, it's not changing our life at all. But it's cool yeah. to do. So we, if we if definitely it enough, it'd be great. But I'm, I'm not. We're not planning on stopping anything we do because of it. That's for sure. Yeah, we 100 percent went into the YouTube thing thinking it was going to be half of our income. Like we had, we had big dreams about eBay doing in half and and YouTube doing half, and that's how we were going to make our living. <laughs> now that we're we out. quickly adjusted, but honestly, if if <laughs> YouTube never gave us anything else other than what it's given us so far. I think it's already given us more, more potential income and more actual income from 
from off YouTube sources because of YouTube. Like we wouldn't have done Place Profit without YouTube. We wouldn't have yeah. met Stephen Donna. We wouldn't have met 50 other resellers that we've met in person and online had we not been on YouTube. And you also got to remember more with, from with those us, people. With us, we, a lot of people, they start a YouTube channel and then they, they're tr the goal is, you know, in three months, they want to be monetized. In six months, we want to yeah. be monetized. We were on it for two and a half years before we got monetized. So it's not like, Oh, we finally hit that goal. It's like we it was already part of our routine for a long time that yep. if we if we weren't monetized today, we'd still be making the videos. So Yeah. Yeah, you know, we it, did for a long time without being monetized too. And and honestly, being monetized, I mean, once you hit that thousand, that's exciting. It's exciting. But nothing really changes after you hit a thousand, other right. than you don't have to chase that number anymore. It's done. Now <laughs> yeah. now it's all about views. And we got our thousand don't and change the, as fast. The next video we did, we thought. We hit a thousand. We're monetized. This is going to be big. Next video we made was a fun parody <laughs> thing of that we're so famous and everything, and that's how we kind of celebrated our thousand. We had a little celebration video. Yeah, yeah. And we thought we thought and we, I don't remember what I had a catchy title and everything. I thought and I thought, oh, this is going to be a big one, and it was a complete dud of a video. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we just do ourselves this this you know trying to outthink it doesn't work for us. Yeah, I think the video after our thousand mark when Man. we hit a thousand made four cents. <laughs> and they're not doing much more than that these days. So. Right. Right. <laughs> Man, I I feel left out. I'm not in the the 1000 monetized club like you guys are. I think uh, the video you the... said you were going to make the other day would probably help get you there. Oh, you just yeah. have to make the video. I I know that's the I have so many I should I should be at least the DOG in me thinks <laughs> I should be the biggest YouTuber out there uh, if I would just make this content that runs through my my crazy head all day. Well, you are and, you uh, are technically probably one of the biggest YouTubers out there who doesn't make content. Who yeah, probably <laughs> maybe so? Oh, you had you're said doing you were really that, well for somebody that doesn't make content. <laughs> you were you were hoping that you know YouTube would be half of your income and reselling would be half of your income, and that's pretty much the, the position that I'm in right now is. That, you know, I'm not monetized on my channel or whatever because, because you know, effort or whatever. So I'm making no money there. And, you know, and I'm a horrible reseller. So I'm really not making any money there either. <laughs> so, you know, mission accomplished goals, you know, hashtag life goals. And uh, well, speaking of so, YouTube, but, I thought you were monetized. Yeah, I, just, I didn't know. The fact that YouTube is kind of the perk we found of YouTube anyway is what we've learned from other resellers. And the, yes. the things we've picked up from other resellers, not from their channels, but from actually making the connections because of YouTube. And yeah. one of those channels was actually Steven Donna. And we've learned a lot from them and the other people at the, at the place to profit event this year, but their, their model, well, it's, it's, they didn't invent the model, but the way they're doing what we do yeah. was so starkly different than the way we do it, that Teresa and I do it. It was very interesting to us. So we kind of latched on and started looking into that, which is kind of one of the reasons we really started watching their channel more and more. Yeah. And it's the reason I've, I've been talking to you about having Steve on is because I, I think the more people hear about it, it, it is a very interesting yeah. way to, to move a lot of inventory. And it's something we yes. had never even thought of when it comes to this, because it's just not something you hear about. Hi, Bonnie. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, Bonnie's Steve. Here. <laughs> Sorry, she can't hear you, but yeah, Kim thought your name was oh, Bonnie. So have her uh, have hey bo hi, hi Bonnie. Hi, Donna. Nice to meet here, you. Here. Hello, Donna. Here, put this in I was, here for a second. <laughs> I was throwing my band. Good to good to see you, Donna. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bob. I'm Ken, SSK Promo, and <laughs> hi, you Bob. know you know Corey. <laughs> good to see you. So you are the other half, the better half of Much Happy better. Heart Treasures. Uh, yeah, when you when you watch the videos, you just just really enjoy you guys interaction with one another and what you're doing and you know how you get along and the different uh, the different processes and, and specialties, if you will, that you have um, that complement each other. In, we tried to uh, in book the Donna first, but she said that Steve would have <laughs> yeah. to take her place, and yeah. she had real work to do. Yeah. We didn't want, we didn't want Steve. It was, <laughs> we need the, we need a pretty face on here. We don't need, you know, they see Corey and I's mugs every week. Well, you know, and uh, we thought we need to get, you know, a fresh new, uh, fresh new look, and then we ended up with another, you know, balding middle aged guy, and so. <laughs> Uh, that's how about them apples? So kind of resells um, that or sums up the reseller crowd right there, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> See you, Donna. Nice to meet All you. Right.
And so, right. yeah, we one of the reasons, you know, uh, Corey has been talking about you is you do kind of have an interesting way or something that's a little bit different than what other people are doing of how you source your inventory. And yeah. then we'll talk about that. And then you're you're sourcing and you're getting lots of stuff, lots of oh. things that may not necessarily going to be listed on on eBay or in now are you just primarily eBay? Is that your platform? Do you sell no. on any other? Oh, when when you... okay, so three years ago when we went full time, um, we had been I have been on e eBay since two thousand one. I started when you mailed checks to people. You know, I was one of yes. those, and I just you know would find out random things. I did sports cards for a while twenty years ago, and then I did geocaching path tags for a long time with my friends. We'd resell those, but when we got a few years back, probably five years ago, we got, there was a Lincoln dollar auction and it's a Facebook group and everything is a 24 hour auction. And then okay. they come and you sell it. And then at the end, it's just like eBay on a 24 hour scale. And then they come okay. pick up from you. So we were doing this just for some a side hustle, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it got really big. And then eBay, we were kind of was on the back burner. We had just a little in inventory, little eBay store. And when we decided to try to go full time, uh, Donna quit first and we really started listing a lot more on eBay. And so our goal was, I, my goal was kind of like Corey's 50, 50 goal with YouTube. Mine was, yeah. I want to do 75% eBay, maybe, you know, even up to hundred percent eBay and then just have the dollar auction just to move the other stuff. But okay. now almost three years later, it's like still 50, 50. We have, we've kind of changed our mode of thinking after planes to profit that we do want to get more to the eBay side. Okay. Um, because Donna's had a lot of issue with Facebook and she's been suspended several times for, and they don't give us any good reason, like not suspended, uh -huh. but restricted. So she can't comment. So she can't do her dollar auctions and they don't yeah. give us any real good explanation. So we're trying to get more of the eBay, but it's literally like 50, 50 on through the dollar auction, which is nice yes. because they actually come pick it up from you. I don't have to ship the stuff. And then 50 which is cool. on eBay. So those those are kind of your selling platforms. So you're not on a lot of the other kind of the mainstream ones like the Macaris <laughs> and the Poshmarks and the Etsy's and those uh, sorts of things. No, but I did sign up for Bonanza a few days ago, so I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to sell some stuff. <laughs> we have converted one. Nice. Um, <laughs> and it's just because it was so right. easy. You just sign up and it it sinks it all. So no, Donna tried Macari and, and <laughs> Poshmark three years ago and just having yeah. the closet and having to refresh or whatever it is you're supposed yeah. to do and all that. Um, we'd like to do Macari, get into that. Uh, Poshmark sounds like a lot of babysitting and yeah, you can, you can exactly. pay bots to do it or something. But so no, we're just eBay mainly. And then the local dollar auction, you know, on my marketplace, we sell things because on the dollar auction, we sell things for well under market value. And I mean, yeah. like, so, I mean, if you want to get into like what we do, actually, it's it's yeah, we have one storage want, unit. Okay, go ahead. Let's... I want to talk. I want to. I want to kind of take do a little bit of progression with this yes. because before you're selling this stuff, you have to get it. You have yeah. to source this someplace. And uh, I know you guys do a lot of stuff with. Um, you're doing cleanouts. You're doing like estate sale cleanouts, or you're doing. Um, uh, maybe after a yard sale or whatever, you're you're yeah. getting all this stuff. So talk a little bit about what how you're getting all of this stuff and what kind of model that you've, uh, you know, kind of worked yourself into to that's okay, we, outside of the normal, just do, going to yard sales or thrift stores. We do. Ev we've tried everything. We've, we've tried pallets. We've tried the Amazon stores. We've tried, we do storage units. Um, we do, we do all of the above thrifting okay. in our town is not that great. Most of the goodwills here are really crappy. And the one that's the farthest away from us is the good one a good one because it's course. in a richer neighborhood but it is full every time you go by there the parking lot is full so we don't thrift a lot gotcha. we love garage sales we we stock up in garage sale season for the winter and this and that and then we go to we don't a lot of the state sale companies here are really expensive and so we don't do a lot of the state sales okay but we, so and we do storage units but we don't do them that often i mean they're the greatest ones for video content honestly they have more views than everything else when we do storage yeah. units. But, yep but those get really out of hand with the prices um ever since covid like it, anybody will tell you it's expensive to buy storage units yeah. um so what we started doing we we did garage sale buyouts like we talked and we'd hear somebody say something about well when it's all over it's all going to goodwill and then we'd reach out and be like well you know if you were going to donate it anyway we would come pick it all up for you we'll box it up and take it for you and then we'll yes. you guys 
when you do that, you're at a garage. I'm just picturing like we're at a garage sale and they're talking about everything's cheap. It's all going to Goodwill when we're done. Do you have a card you give them or do you just leave them your, your number on a piece of we paper? Le we left them our number on a piece of paper for the most part. And then we got business cards and then we, we handed a couple of those out and then we ran out. Like we just ordered more business cards, but no, it was just, most of that would be just written on a hand on a piece of paper, just our phone number and our name. That alone, I think would give you enough extra, give you enough extra it, material to, to process during a summer. It, it, I mean, you'd have a few storage storage units worth of stuff just out of garage sales. I would. Well, say. We didn't. We haven't done a lot of those. It happened. You know, a lot of the people don't call you back. They're really interested, and then they get to thinking about it, which the mentality out there blows my mind that reselling has this negative connotation, as we all know, with it. Yeah. But yeah. literally every single store, especially Goodwill, where everybody takes their stuff to them. They're all resellers. Walmart's a reseller. The grocery store. Walmart's a reseller. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And so it's weird that there's such a negative thing with it. But and so some people they're like, oh, that sounds good. And I'm sure after we leave, they're like, well, why would we give it all to them? Let's take it to Goodwill. Well, we have run into that before, yeah. where people were where where people were ready to just throw something away, mm -hmm. and then you say, well, don't throw it away. I'll take it if you don't want it, and 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 we'll resell it. And then they're like, oh, well, it must be worth money. And then all of a sudden it's not for sale anymore. That's, right. It's worth <laughs> right. a fortune. We've it's, seen that right. quite a few times. Right. So what, where we really started with massive inventory is we were at an estate sale um, just down the road out of town here, just a little bit. And we were checking out and we'd been to these people's estate sale a couple of times. And they're a really nice couple that runs this company. Mm -hmm. And we're checking out and we bought a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. And Donna says, this is in 23 years, I think this is the closest we've ever been to divorce because Donna says <laughs> to the lady, she says, so what do you do with everything after the sale? And I just like, I was ready to kick her under the table. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's, she, the lady's uh. like, oh, well, you know, usually it's up, it's up to the family what they want to do, but you know, there's, there's a place that they hire. We have a comp, uh, we have a connection that they hire. Sometimes they just take it all to goodwill. Sometimes they donate it here or there, or there is somebody that will come and clean out whatever and blah, blah, blah. And so Donna's like, well, we'd be interested in, in doing that. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, this like is a big say. We, there was, the royal we. Yeah, yeah, we are we, are we that's for sure. But there <laughs> was a room full of books, and there was a basement and all this stuff in the basement. And there was outside, there was just stuff all over the lawn. And I'm, and she's like, oh, that'd be really, you know what? Well, I'll talk to him. I'll give you a call later. And we left, and I was so mad at her. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> we so we got the call and they said um you know if you're interested and come do this and that was one of it wasn't the biggest but that was one of probably the top three or four biggest cleanouts we've done and uh -huh. we didn't get paid we did it for free and so we hired we we had my neighbor came and helped our best friends came and helped my brother and his wife came and helped we had and had their son we probably had eight people there and it still took like all of a whole day and then into the next day and we paid those people so we started out um, I don't remember how much, but several, several hundred dollars in the hole. And we had, and it was all picked over estate sale things. And so, it, yeah. you know, so and you just said we did it, we did it for free. And then you had to pay help yeah. when you, when I first heard that you guys were doing these and all the way up until today, actually, I assumed you were paying them for the stuff. And then no. part of that payment was you had to clean the things out, but that's no. not the case. So what happened was we, we started, we did it for free and we did it for free for a few sales started to get into a few sales. And then we had a bigger sale and the, the people, the people, the estate sale company basically told us, they said, you're not, you need to charge something for this because what we found out was the other person that does what we do was charging I'm not going to say any numbers or anything, but a lot of yeah. money to do this. And they, he said, he, and he just donates everything. He does. He's not a reseller. They say, I don't know, never met him, but he's not a reseller. He just donates everything. His service is just to do the clean out, but he charges yeah. quite a bit of money. Well, we figure, well, since we're resellers, we can make some money on the back end. But since it's already been through a state sale and all the resellers and everybody have picked through it, we know there's not yeah. as much value left. So we started charging a little bit. And then a couple of times they, they, you know, we found out that we're still not charging enough because we want to minimum charge cover our expenses is where we were started. So we started in the door, started for free, charged a little mm -hmm. more, a little more. And now we're to a place where we're comfortable that the job we're, what the amount we're charging, we're comfortable that we're well under what our competition would charge. Yeah. But you know, but now we're, we charge enough that it makes up for us not listing and selling for those couple days or whatever. 
And so yeah. it's like it's it's well worth it because I don't I don't want to keep doing it if it's not worth it to take those couple oh, days sure. and, and and stop doing everything else. And I want to be able to make money, take the day off after you know, not take the day off, but just be like not feel the pressure of holy sure. cow, we got to get this done and, I and do. pay help and pay our. I do help. have questions about the process going yes. there, but. I could tell you a, a, a quick story about our first opportunity to do a clean out type of thing. We actually got approached by a realtor that we know, the realtor that was involved in buying our building in town. And when they have a house that they have to try and sell, sometimes they need to clean them out. Right. Yeah. So she asked us to clean that out. And we put our name out there to the realtors that we would do that. Mm -hmm. The very first time that she called us was because somebody had left and left everything in the house. They had, they had butchered a deer in the living room oh and it was God. all still there <laughs> on the living room floor in the carpet and they needed okay. somebody to come clean the house out. And we Life in the we, Midwest. We just said, nope, that's it. We're not <laughs> doing that's that. That's funny. We moved our friends to Kansas and we stayed in a hotel and in the hotel room in middle of Kansas, in a small town, there's a sign that says um, something. I don't remember what Donna read it. Something about... Uh, please do not clean your animals in the hotel rooms. They will. <laughs> I was like, what? Yes. why would you even, but that's, that's nasty. That's... But you know, it, it towards ahead, the, Clint. towards the actual clean out part that you guys are doing. Um, with, do you guys just line up a U-Haul and a dumpster when you go to these places? I mean, what is your process? Do you know that obviously you see a beforehand, right? Yeah. We go to the estate sale first, like to shop. We, we go to check it out to see what it's like. And then we don't, give them a price until we wait until like the last day until a couple hours before it's over so we so it's fair so we know okay a lot of this furniture What's left? whatever yeah and so then we'll give them a quote and we'll say we're oh, we're willing to do this for this much and if you know sometimes it doesn't work out they they don't and sometimes they do so but, it's not just a flat rate it's a kind of based on what you're seeing as there and, and the time and the effort that you would have and, in and it. people will call us like so our name has got we haven't done, had to do any advertising because we must be doing an okay job because word of mouth is is has been enough advertising. But people yes. will call us and every and they want to know, well, what do you charge or what would this or you want to do a buyout? And it's all each case is individual and we can't give them any. Just like if you call to say how much would new cabinets be, they're going to tell you we have to come out and look and measure and everything. Was yeah. same thing. We had a so couple, how many, a couple of spectrum how many pianos. Have you, know, you had to move? Um, a couple, no big ones, <laughs> but a couple. Uh, and that's not fun. We don't have a warehouse. We're not spoiled like Corey was, and Teresa and have all this. I room. was going to ask <laughs> that. Where do you keep all this? Well, I know one of your one of your latest uh, videos that I that I just watched. I think it might even be your your latest one is uh, talking about how you had just finally got the garage cleaned out. You had the big <laughs> uh, dollar yard sale. And we'll talk yeah. about that here real quick. And you finally got it done. And it's like, ha, ah, you know, we can rest. And then you get a phone Breathe. call. Yeah. And now here you are out you know picking up and so you know i put the banner up there again go check out it'll be description in the description a link to um steve and donna's channel happy heart treasures make sure you go check out their stuff uh you know hit some thumbs up subscribe to them and uh Our but what the one thing i think that was interesting and in you set up your story there is that those estate sale companies or at least the one that you first started to deal with said you should be charging you should be yeah. charging us. You know, they could have, essentially you were doing this for free when you first started. And then they yeah. said, uh, you know, that I think that's just pretty cool that it's, they would. It's crazy. Donna contacted, we went to another state sale company and Donna talked to them in the same way, which we're keeping busy enough with the few contacts we have. I don't, yeah, I don't want to do this every weekend because it is hard, hard work. And yes. so I was a little frustrated with her because she wanted to reach out to all these companies. And I'm like, well, we don't have the time and I don't want to, I don't want to hire a crew. I don't want to have employees because then you get into a whole nother thing, yes. you know, with taxes and everything else. But been there. <laughs> the funny, <laughs> the funny thing is, um, we've had it, we've had it go a couple different ways. Where Donna, oh yeah, okay. So I was gonna say Donna was. We were in a state cell and she started talking to the people, and the people about laughed her out of the room. And she's like, "Wait, you want to charge to take to clean this to take this stuff?" And she's like, "Yeah." And they're like, "No, we take bids and people buy it." And um, yeah. and to us, to us, I kind of understand it because when we first started, that would have made sense. But after yes. doing this for a couple of years now, the stuff is picked over. I mean, it's a lot of work to get because you have yeah. to take everything. That means all of the, all of the open used things in the bathroom and all of the all of the dirty clothes that 
you know, all the stuff under the beds, all the crap. You have to take everything. And, yeah. all, you know, I, I will say the resellers like myself would want to believe that all the good stuff's gone because everybody, you know, you think you're that good. But we always find hidden treasures. But we take sure. a lot of stuff that, you know, we donate and then we take to the dumps what needs to go to the dumps and stuff like that. Last night after this one, we had two U-Haul trailers in our driveway. We got one back last night, emptied it, but we still I think have we overestimate other resellers a lot. I remember when, well, I remember when, like it was a long time ago, like less than two <laughs> years ago, Teresa and I started doing this and we'd be in a Goodwill looking stuff up on our phone, trying to be secret because we were sure we were the only resellers in there. Everybody else was just shopping. Yeah. And and then go, you know, a year and a half, two years later, you go into Goodwill and like there's one person shopping and there's 40 resellers. But we yes. always found stuff Every. when we were sure we were the only reseller in there, and we weren't. Yeah. We always found stuff. Planes it, of Profit It's a more good now that we don't. I, I, did we get our own go, I did not want to go to Planes of Profit and do the reselling bus, the party bus, because uh -huh. I, I still thought, I know it's different now in my thinking, but Planes of Profit opened my eyes because I thought, there's 40-some resellers on this bus. What are we going to do? We ain't buying nothing. And you know what? Everybody's looking for different stuff. Yes, we're all looking yeah. for the Hoka's. And we're all looking for the miss me jeans. You know, if we see them, we're going to buy them. But everybody has different specialties and different knowledge Keep about different things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me, let me I want to go down this path real quick since you said everybody's looking for stuff. Uh, when you are just when you're not doing a clean out, because in, in these clean outs, you're just you're taking everything. Yes. When you are out at the, the sales uh, or the thrift stores or whatever, uh, do you have uh, what's your what's your go to item? What what is the thing that you like to sell? Uh, I know obviously you're an everything seller and you're not niche down, but what's what's the one thing that catches your eye? Or if you you show up at a sale or a thrift store, what department do you go to first? Uh, I go to the shoes and then I go to hard goods. Donna, I can't even tell you where she goes because we just split up and go. <laughs> um, she sees she looks at completely different things than I do. Um, yes. I don't, I honestly, I don't have a niche. I, I quit two years ago. I would have told you, I love looking for video games, but so many people yeah. look for video games that they're hard to find anymore. So I, yeah. that's kind of like the, the having two people that go opposite directions at a sale is like a superpower, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love it. it. But when we <laughs> yes. come back, if we come back with a full van, only 25% of it's mine, Donna yep. buys cause Donna. Okay. So we didn't really get into like how we get rid of all this stuff yet. But Donna does, because I make videos and because I do all the shipping, I do all like the eBay stuff after it's, after it's listed. She helps with the uh -huh. listing. So my time is taking up that. So she sells a lot more on the local dollar auction than I do. So she yeah. has to have a lot of product for that. So, so in garage sales, she buys a lot more than I do. Um, I'm looking, I have the eBay mentality, um, looking larger. Yeah. She's looking for the things that she can get for 50 cents and flip for $5 on the dollar auction. So okay. Going, yeah, going back mentality. to that, to the sourcing part when you're actually at the sale yeah, and, and it kind of, kind of applies to this too, with you guys going through and finding the stuff that you want. Do you, do you do kind of a triage right there at the sale as you're loading stuff up and sort things? We're keeping this, this is dollar auction. This is eBay. This is you mean at the garbage. Cleanout? Yeah. At the clean out. Yeah. It, it, again, it varies sale to sale with, if we, We've had sales where we have a couple of days where we have the keys and we could sort there. And that is so helpful. We did a yeah. sale. We did a clean out three or four weeks ago where they had an empty roll off dumpster for us in the driveway. That was so that helpful. But like this one yesterday, the lady, it's the daughter. She's here from out of state and her mom had passed. She was there the whole day. So you don't you don't want to do that because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or right. something because. Yeah. People's stuff and like their parents and stuff, they a lot of times they feel that it's all worth something and, and a lot of it is, but you don't know what it is that they have that attachment. So we just box everything up and then we sort it back at house. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so it all depends on the situation. If, if we're in the that house for sense. ourselves, it's so much easier. I was actually thinking if we were good, if we were going to do something like that, I would almost start. Well, one, I would have a trailer like I would own a trailer because I have room for it out here. And, yeah. and two, there would be a dumpster in the driveway. <laughs> we, we there would be a dumpster in the driveway before I okay, got there. This last Corey's sale, palatial they, estate out there with all of his outbuildings. But this is but this is the the part of it that that's what I thought too. We when we did the one that had the roll off dumpster, I thought, well, this is the way to go. We're going to do this from now on. So this one we you did made a good point weekend, though about the family. But this one we did this weekend that was they had a roll off dumpster during they had, they've had two estate sales there because they had so much stuff. 
and they had a uh-huh. roll-off dumpster there the whole time. So we were like, well, we're going to get a roll-off dumpster because, you know, that's what they had anyway. But then yeah. when we looked at it, we decided, I did the math, you know, in my head, which just doesn't take very long because there ain't much to do. But what we could take out and sort and take to the dumps in the van in a small U-Haul trailer, because that's the only one we could take to our transfer station dump, it would cost us 10 times. We could get it done. It'd take us a little more time, but we could get it done for 10 times less the money than a yeah. U-Haul dumpster would cost. So the cost really? affected convenience, yes, but the cost effectiveness, it would cost us like $200 more to do it that way. So, yeah. that, so that didn't yeah. make sense. You know, but... So- Let's go down the road here a little bit of, uh, you know, we want people to go watch your channel and watch your videos and see what you're doing and how you're doing right. that. Um, and so, you know, that's an interesting way that you're sourcing that the estate sale companies are paying are paying you. You've worked out deals to Not estate sale companies. It's the, the owners oh. of the house. The owners so, of the after house. Estate, families... After a estate sale company is over, after it's, the sale is over, the companies a lot of times, unless, it, you know, some they have different policies some of the companies probably i know there's a couple of companies here in town that it's in their contract they keep everything that's left and then they yeah. actually resell it but a, a lot of the companies when it's over they pack up their tables and they walk away and then the owners have to yep. figure out what to do with have the to house. deal with it okay so gotcha, that, that, gotcha. So we're, we're connected with this day sale company but it's completely separate like business for the owners to look at okay what are we gonna okay do and i guess that makes a little more sense because you know i wasn't paying attention the whole time anything that you were saying i was just kind of <laughs> you know daydreaming here so but that does, <laughs> it is that does make day, a little yeah. more sense oh yeah you know i've got other things on my mind the whole uh, three 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 what am i gonna do yeah. later in the day <laughs> to celebrate uh, but no, that, okay. That makes a little more sense that, um, that the, the homeowners and not the estate sale companies yeah, are yeah. paying you. Yes. Because the, obviously the homeowners had a reason to have an estate sale. Right. They're trying to get all this stuff cleaned out and afterwards they got to do something and, and you're taking that, that burden away from them. Um, so let's, let's talk about, uh, again, we want people to watch your videos and see that whole process. So we won't give up all the secrets here. Cause I want to go to some of your, how you're getting rid of all of this stuff. Again, yeah, you talked about how a, some of this we're stuff We're going to have a long is, enough episode, are we? <laughs> no. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to run out of time here. I can nutshell it. Um, so here's the thing here. So when we did that very first one and it was massive mm-hmm. and there was all this furniture, we, we have one storage unit that we just keep all the time. It's kind of our death pile. We cycle through that and try to get through it, whatever. And then we have our garage. Our garage is, and our basement is all eBay. And if you ever watch our channel, you see like how we store all our eBay and everything else. So that first sale, we brought everything home and we had all this furniture and we put it in our driveway and we're like, what are we going to do with this stuff? So that was the first uh, Steve and Donna $1 garage sale. It was a unplanned, un anything. It was a Sunday morning. We sent a message that night. Donna's like, let's have a garage sale tomorrow. And I'm like, how do we even do that? We don't have any plans. And she's like, the stuff's already in the driveway. Let's just open the boxes and whatever. So we did that. We're yeah. like, we're like a dollar garage. So we put it out on the Facebook marketplace. We messaged, you know, all sent messages to all our people from that had bought on our dollar auction. And we just got up early in the morning, drug everything out on a Sunday morning. And we started at whatever, eight or nine in the morning. And we thought, well, hopefully the furniture will for sure sell for a dollar, you know, and we just, we let it all go for a dollar. All the furniture pieces, we let it go for a dollar. And really? we got rid of tons of stuff. But that's the oh, thing. When we get furniture, we don't have the storage space to... We did yeah. a thing out a few weeks ago, and there was this vintage table and chair set. And one of the persons there said, there's a set just like this at a store in Omaha for $300. So you should do really well on this. Yeah. I don't have the place to put it, and I don't have the desire to open a storefront at all. So we literally put it on the dollar auction. We got $6 for it. But you know what? We didn't care because the bulk of our money is in the smaller items. The, when we get the big stuff, yeah. we want to just move it. Now, some people might think, well, that's stupid. But on the other hand, we have a lot of returning customers because they get really good deals from us. So yeah. they may only pay $6 for this table and chairs, but then they buy a whole bunch of other stuff from us and they become, you know, we, yeah. and we love yes. helping out a lot of our clients locally are, um, they're not, you know, not well to do people like in rich houses or anything like that, but they like found Corey. that they can get a lot. Yeah. Like Corey with all that <laughs> property and stuff, Take but they found over there, leprechaun. They, they found they can <laughs> get really good deals with us. And we love that. You know, we, we're not the eBay stuff. Yeah. We're hoping to get the, the, 
maybe not the top dollar. I would try to come yeah. in just at the bottom of the market. But but uh, you know the, the the local stuff. Our our uh, business model is the fast nickel over the slow dime. We we just yes. flip it. We need to turn it because we have so much coming in. We've got to get rid of it. So yes. what we tell people when we started doing this, we were selling four people. Like people would bring us stuff to sell for them, and yeah. we would split fifty fifty was our rate. Now eBay was more like they'd only get like twenty five percent because it would be fifty fifty after fees, and we were upfront yes. about it. It's not going to be very much. And so what we actually did the whole time we'd sell for people, we went and we wouldn't. Yeah, well, sure, we'd love to get your really cool, expensive stuff and sell it, but we yeah. don't want you to be mad when you don't get as much for it. So we actually would let, try to encourage people. You know, we would love it, but you should sell it yourself. You can get more money, sell it yourself. That way. Yes. So the people that we did sell for mostly were people that didn't care how much they got. They didn't. They were like, okay. we just need they it just to go, go away. And that works best. We had a couple of people that did care how much they got and that didn't work out. So that's kind of why we stopped selling for people because, yeah. you know, other than family and really close friends, we don't do that anymore because there's a lot of trust there. And we got kind of questioned a couple times and it was like, okay, yes. we don't need to do this because it gets, it gets muddy as I know a lot of resellers know, you know, when you sell for other people, it can get muddy real fast. But, I do love the, the kind of the genius that comes from necessity sometimes when I'm looking at the way you guys do things as far as moving stuff. When you have that much stuff coming in, you have to move it on the backside. It has to go away. It has to go yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And I've seen you guys do some unique stuff to get rid of it from, like you said, the dollar garage sales you guys have, the way you structured that where you were like a, a dollar for most of the day, then you dropped to 50 cents an item, then it was free for the last couple that's, hours. That's what we do like, now, yeah. When I saw you guys do that, I thought that was fantastic and yeah. a great way to clear out. You guys have done um, the, the dollar auction on Facebook which we're trying to establish one here, but we have a very small population. That's it's right. going to be a long, long hill to climb. If you but can get it with even... some traction, it's it'll be well worth it. I know yep. it's a struggle, but and I've seen you yeah. guys even do stuff like like find a seller of a specific type of thing, like like glass, like Alicia, this... and say you can have everything in here that's glass. You just have to take it all. You can't nitpick it. That's this was brand yeah, new. Just, we did just yesterday. I was I was going to tell you about this. Um, so we had this clean out and everybody always wants to know where we get all this stuff and everything like that. So uh, Alicia, the ink picker, she lives in our neighborhood, like I said. And then there's another guy in town that he's he was a reseller for a little while. And he's just been getting back into it after watching our videos. So he said, so we Donna had this brilliant idea. She's like, let's do this clean out. Let's box up all this stuff and let's offer it to them if they want to come get it. So yeah. that's what we reached out to these two people. And we told Alicia, we said, you, yeah, just like you said, you can have all of the glass and, and dishes and all the breakables, mm -hmm. but we're going to box that. You have to take it all. You, yep. And we don't know. It's after a say sale. So, you know, we don't. And that's every time we do this, we don't know if we're getting good stuff or not. We've done cleanouts where we didn't get much out of it. But yeah. so we offered it to both these people. As long as you take everything from these rooms or whatever, you can have it and you can go through it. And I hope you make a lot of money and I hope you find some really cool stuff, but there's no guarantee. And so yes. they both did that yesterday. They both showed up. Both one guy, he came with two vehicles and loaded both vehicles. Did we miss out on some sales? Maybe, but remember, we're getting paid to do the job. So yes. we kind of were able to share the wealth. You know, we maybe missed Very out some cool. stuff we could make money for, but now they had all this inventory that they can go through. And they both messaged us last night and they were like, Thanks so much for doing that, whatever. And we're just like, Well, thanks for helping us. Like that helped us. Yeah. Say, you've, get rid of you've a lot now of made a You've now made a contact for the next sale that you don't have to hire somebody to come help you clean it out. You can literally right. box up all of one yeah. type of item and say, yeah. come get it. Yeah, and I, think, and, I think Alicia said they had actually already found a couple things that made that worth it to them. Yeah, yeah, that's what, in, that's in what the glass, like. which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I would, I would imagine too, with, you know, I've watched some of your videos and the effort that, that you have to put into that, that there's, you know, that this is just so interesting. I'm sure there's a lot of people that might watch this and go, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing that when I'm at a sale or an estate sale, I'm going to say, Hey, I'll come and get all this stuff and you can pay me and stuff. And then they probably do it like once or twice yes, exactly and then right. they find out the That's effort. Worked. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's a fair amount of stuff that you get that, that is not going to be suitable for your dollar auction uh, that you do through the Facebook or your dollar garage sale or to list. That's just stuff that somehow you got to get rid of. You talked earlier about you can only take a certain size vehicle to your transfer station, which is kind of like a, a dump to just get rid right, of right. stuff or things that are not donatable. And so 
you might have competition in that area by putting information out there that that's just what we do and until somebody probably actually does it one time every you know if it was easy everybody'd do it that's yep. that's yes. the thing i exactly. when we first did it i came home and i said well i'm never doing that again and now <laughs> we do it regularly and every time i'm going into it i'm like what are we doing but then by the time we're that. done it's, I've said it's, that same thing about our first, our second, and our third storage locker. <laughs> <laughs> right. And storage yeah. units, too. We really enjoy storage units. But yeah. for every one that you find that there's a couple, our last one, maybe, there was cash. We found a box with cash, and we did really well in the storage unit. But for that yeah. one, there was 10 before it that were full of mice poop and, you know, just disgusting food. And, yep. and, and, and it's not you're not going to hit, you're going to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the prince is what, you know, we go garage scaling and our best friend, Larry, he's always like, so you out kissing frogs today? <laughs> yeah, we're kissing yep. a lot of frogs, but that's, that's know. actually a very, very good way to, uh, to look at it. You know, yeah. when frogs are green as well, I imagine they celebrate St. <laughs> Patrick's day every Probably day. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve, man, this is, this is great. Interesting stuff. I, I definitely encourage everyone. I'll throw this ticker up here again. I definitely uh, encourage everyone to go check out Steve and Donna's channel, Happy Heart Treasures, uh, just to kind of see a lot of their day-to-day -day, uh, what what they're doing in their reselling business. And they go over those cleanouts. They go over that in the recently, you just recently had that dollar garage sale. Uh, how how often, how many times a year are you doing the, the dollar we, garage sale? When we started out, um, when we had that first dollar garage sale, we had like, three of them in the first few months. And then we uh -huh. got told from another reseller that we're friends with here in town, they were having garage sales like that. And somebody turned them in because in city city guide ordinance or whatever, you okay. can only have this amount, like two, three dollars, two, three day sales or three, one day sales or something like that. There's some kind of law about it. So we've decided yeah. we're just going to do one in the spring, one in the fall. So that's okay. all. This is where really being rich and living on an estate like me comes <laughs> yeah. in yes. handy. Because yeah. I'm out you of city, I'm out of the city limits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we all get fooled by that. Uh, that those folks that have the perpetual garage sale. It's just like always, yeah. always open, and it's the same stuff. And it's I, and you, you know, know you, you're looking up the phone. sales or you chase a I'm sign on, on my map. I I type in all the addresses on my Google Maps. And then uh -huh. at the beginning of the day. And so I have ones that have a red icon. And those are the ones that when I type it in, don't go to that one. Because <laughs> we have a black list before. too. Yeah. That yeah. we just stopped not, going to. See, I'm not that organized. I always end up back at these same sales. There's just, there's just one that's not too far away. Every single time I get, I get punked by them because they advertise it differently. They'll advertise it as an estate sale. They'll advertise it as a big, massive moving sale. They advertise it different ways. And you would think that I would recognize the address or the street, but but I don't. And I show up and it's like, ah, these people again. And <laughs> oh, but I go up and I end up buying I'd something. Say you from could that. just drive on it's, by. I've, I, I've I should. That. I should. But uh but anyway, Steve, I think, you know, we're going to uh, get wrapped up here for this episode, but very interesting uh, yeah. process of the way that you're sourcing. Hour. Yeah, I could I could talk about this because it's exciting to, to hear something different that that I'm not doing uh, a different way to source a different way to um, to sell. Again, you know, you're doing eBay, but it sounds like a lot of your business, a lot of your things are done through this dollar auction thing, through yeah. that's Facebook, that's, and it's, you're able to get rid of this massive amount of inventory that you bring in all the time. You know, you pull out the, the listing, good stuff. Like, and that's what people don't understand the scale. When we're home yeah. and listing, when we're not traveling and not doing a clean out or whatever, on just the dollar auction, not counting eBay, I think we go through, it's like, 350 to 450 items a week. So, I mean, it's, it's a massive really? scale. It's 50 to 75 items a day that's on there that we just continually move. So that's why we can do these big cleanups and have all this inventory because we yeah. have a place where we can just move truckloads of stuff. Yes. There's only, and, and there's you only a certain to. amount of people willing to do that kind of work. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It is. Yep. It's a lot of work. Nobody. And you would have to have those in place. You know, I, I again, I, you talk there how some people are probably going to say, oh, this is a great thing. I'm going to go out when I'm at the yard sales and I'm at the estate sales and I'm going to start, you know, giving them my business card. Hey, I'll do this, this clean out. Uh, and uh, you, but not everything that's left over is stellar. 
And uh, well, I'm not you, doing there's, that. there's and money. If I see Teresa talking to the estate sale lady like Donna did, I'm going to put you're a sock in that. Her. Yeah, you're actually going to kick her <laughs> under the table. What are you doing? <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs> well, so, if you do, Corey, call me. We'll come up. We'll help you clean it out. Okay. There I'll you go. Help. There you go. You got some help. So how how far away are you guys from one another? Like, what's a, a trip between? It's probably like four hours. Yeah, it's, I think it's about, about three and a half About four hours. hours. Okay. Um, so... Corey, did you have anything else for for Steve that I I know yeah. you had like a million questions that you like wanted to ask? Things. Is there anything that uh, that you wanted to to cover that we can do here yet? Not today, that we or? could do in the time we got, so we might have okay. to have Steve back on at some point. But but yeah, for lots sure. of questions left. I think this gave us a lot of food for thought. Like it, there's a lot of miniature conversations that could spring off of this oh. in different directions. So. One higher. I, I, I have more questions than answers. Like to tell, but you know, obviously, time is these things run long sometimes. So. Yes. Yep. It was. Uh, and Steve, nice meeting you. You know, yes. even though, even though, you know, initially I was disappointed that you weren't a true leprechaun, like I was led to believe. <laughs> true leprechaun. And uh, but uh, see, I'm going to make you big on the screen here and give you a kind of last word. And and I said, you know, Corey. Would you, wouldn't you say this is it's probably the least the least amount that I've talked in an episode for like a long I time? Have, I ramble. I don't, I don't know. I kind no, of blocked it was, out at this point. It wasn't really rambling. It was it was good info. I was interested. I was learning. I was kind of soaking <laughs> that in. And and even in the times I wasn't paying attention, I'm sure you know subconsciously I was probably something getting, got in there. <laughs> something got in there. Yeah. And um, so I'm gonna make you big here. Make a pitch for your for your channel and. Right. Uh, and we will get this wrapped up. All right. Well, again, thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to check out our channel, it's a Happy Heart Treasures. It's in the link below. And then we do have an Instagram that we don't do a lot on, but you can follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. We have a website. But um, the main thing is the YouTube channel, Happy Heart Treasures. Okay, perfect. And we will link all that stuff, that Instagram and that that website and all of that down in the description as well. Um, very cool. Great, fun guest, Corey. Good Good booking. Appreciate you Good being here, booking Steve. here. Oh, I didn't do anything. Yes. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's like and, I said, uh, it's our first time on any on any anything. And so uh, that's well, you fun. Have to come back at time. some point now. Because well, like, I do fun. I I literally have more questions than when I started the podcast. <laughs> like I've I've wrote down several things now. So we're gonna have right, to have well, you back. <laughs> we'll do it again sometime. I'm you just well, let me know. For for your first, you know, thing off your you did well. I, I yeah. appreciate it. It was uh it was a this good got conversation. Me ready. This got me ready. Tuesday night, we have our first live. We've never been live or anything. We are live yep. this Tuesday night. So if anybody wants to check that out, it, it, we're just going to do like a question and answer just like this. And we're going to let people type yeah. in questions and we're going to do a Q&A. It might be a total oh, perfect. Flag. It might be really boring, but we're going to do it this Tuesday at 7 right. Central. So Go so subscribe Tuesday, and hit the bell so you get the notification. Yeah, the Tuesday, 7 Central. Hit yeah. that. I'll be... Uh, See, I don't think I have anything going on Tuesday night, so I'll definitely be in the chat there, you know, yep. causing a ruckus, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll just ask questions that don't pertain to anything that you do. Uh, and I'll get a uh, few of those. <laughs> maybe I'll ask you, you know, the history of St. Patrick's Day. We don't know. There, there you so, go. Yeah, I got to go edit this podcast and cut out all this leprechaun talk. So <laughs> we, we cut her short. Corey, we didn't even get to you. We didn't even get to your transformer scammer bot. Yeah. So go yeah. check out go check out Grams and Pops Vintage their channel. Video. Yesterday's video, which is today's video, which yep. is tomorrow's video. Tomorrow yeah. it'll be yesterday's. Well, there's and like that three videos. Is confusing. There's, a, there's a playlist, so you'll find it. Yes. Go check that it's not out. Good news. And um <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it'll turn out to be good news it's great content might not Fingers be good crossed. news but it is yeah, great how, how content like so the, the bad news is always good content i don't want like that best way. Those are the drama and i appreciate coming on here because i i do i have i've the, watched other podcasts and i've seen other podcasts where people will like talk bad about like other resellers and i don't want no part of that yeah. and so that was just talk bad about corey, each other when corey asked me to come on i said are we going to like talk about other resellers in a bad light? Because I don't want any, I don't want any yeah. part of that drama. So, so yeah. I appreciate you guys for bringing me on and just sticking to our fun. So yeah, did call it you was names. for sure. He did call well, you, so you call names. I'm used to it. It's okay. I got three <laughs> kids. I'm used to it. We should, but there we go. We'll make a thumbnail for this and we'll just have the thumbnail. Just say like, you know, worst guest ever. And then, worst you know, everybody will tune in. For, for the guest, everybody guest seems to love Bonnie. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Worst host <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, nice to meet you, my friend. Corey, nice have a great day. And uh, we will catch you next week on the Reseller Clickbait Podcast.